because there's three different discontinuities. <coughs> what kind do we have and where are they located? So the first one here at x equals a, what would we call that? A removable, good. So we have a removable at x equals a. A whole is the same as a removable, yes. And then here, what do we have here? At x equals b, what do we call that one? A jump. So we have a jump at x equals b. And then lastly, we have this discontinuity. And what do we call that? Infinite. infinite. Or in, you can say infinity. But it's infinite, and that's at x equals c. So the last thing we're going to cover is how to evaluate a piecewise. So for the next two is how do you evaluate a piecewise? We're not going to graph, just going to look at the functions and evaluate it. So I'll give you a moment to copy these questions down, copy down this question. We have three different functions here. So we have our first function, my second function, and my fourth function. And we have the restriction for the domain after the function. So go ahead and copy that down, and then we'll work through it together. Okay, so we're not graphing it. We're just trying to evaluate it. But what we have to do is figure out which function we're using. So we have our domain. So our domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. But we're breaking that domain into three pieces. So my first one is at negative, th negative three. And what is saying that is if you have a number between negative infinity and negative three, we're gonna use the function x plus one. If the number falls between negative three and positive one, then we use our green function, two x minus three. And if it's greater than one, then the answer is just four. So we have to figure out where 
each number falls on the number line. And we have to be careful when it falls on the actual fence because it goes towards the, any, the equation that has the equal sign. So what I mean by that is for the first one, if it's on the negative three, then we will use the pink function because that's equal to. But if it falls on one, then I'm gonna use the green function because that is what is equal to, okay? So when I look at that first one, negative three, which function am I going to use? The red, the green, or the blue? Red. The red. So we're substituting negative three into that function, which would be negative three plus one. Negative three plus one is negative two. Where does two fall on this number line? Where is positive two? Positive two is greater than one, so my answer is just four. So it's a constant function, it's four. Notice that that is the only function where we don't have, a, we don't have an X in there. It's just a horizontal line. What about C when X equals one? Am I using the red, the green, or the blue? Green. The green, you got it. So that would be two times one minus three. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't even hear, I didn't even know who was talking. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So it'll be negative one for, for C. Okay, what about D? What function am I going to use? So it's negative six, so that would be the red, right? So negative six plus one. So my answer is just negative five. Uh, no, we would actually graph all three if it asks us to graph it. But I think we're going to do that homework question that we, you and I were looking at yesterday. That's the one I chose for us to go through together. Okay, where, where would I use, um, what function would I use for x equals zero? Who, who says red? Who says green? Who says blue? It is green because zero falls between here. So I'm gonna put my zero here in this function. So it'll be two times zero minus three. And then lastly, positive three. So positive three is greater than one, so it would be over here. So it's on this piece, and so that means that the answer is just going to be four. All right, any questions about those six? So I'm gonna put up another one, and I want you to try to do them by yourself. And then we'll see how many you get right on your own. Okay, so take a minute, copy those three down and A through F and try to take a few moments to work through all six by yourself.
Who has all six answers? Who needs more time? All right, I'll give you a couple more minutes. So we have our three functions and we're essentially taking our domain and chopping it up to three. Oh, thank you. So this is my first function. This is my second function. This is my third function. You could just put that on my desk. So we're going from negative infinity to positive infinity. We're chopping it at negative five and three. So my first function is when X is less than negative five, we're using X plus one. When X is between negative five and three, it's X squared minus two. And when it's greater than three, greater than or equal to three, it's the square root of X. And you have to be careful though, and look at when it says equal to. So with that in mind, 
negative seven, would you agree that that's less than negative five? So you're using this function here. So it would be negative seven plus one. which is negative six. All right, for three, for three we're using, even though three is right here, because that bottom function says equal to, we're gonna go to the right and use the red function. And that cannot be simplified, so you could just leave it as a square root of three. If you wrote it as a decimal, that's fine also. But because we can't simplify three, I would just personally leave it as the square root of three. Yes, Kimmy? Why is it not in the x squared minus two? Okay, so here, when we look at this inequality for x squared minus two, notice that that function does not say equal three. Oh. The equal three is on the third function. All right, so nine, nine is greater than three, so we're using our red function. So the square root of nine, that does simplify to just be three. Negative five is right here. Which side am I going though? Am I going to the blue side or to the green side? Which side, which function is equal to negative five? Which one? So let's look at the blue. Does the blue say equal negative five? So it would be the green. So let's say negative five squared minus two, which would be 25 minus two, which is 23. All right, zero. Zero would be in between negative five and three, so that's still the green function, so that would be zero squared minus two, which is negative two. And then lastly, negative 10. Negative 10 is less than negative five, so that would be negative 10 plus one, which is negative nine. So who got all six right? At least five right? At least four right? Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and do one homework question. So I wanted to look at number 28 from the homework. So I'll give you a moment to copy that down.
So for this question, essentially you have, it looks like three functions, but there's really just two. And I'll explain why. So you have this one here, which is less than negative one, and this one, which is greater than negative one. This middle one is just a point. It's not a graph per se. This is just an ordered pair or a point. And that point is at negative one, zero. So there is nothing to graph there. We're just plotting a point. So let's make a table for our first function. We're starting at negative one and we're picking numbers less than negative one. So let's say negative two and negative three. If you take negative one, sorry, we're taking the negative three and multiplying it by negative one. Negative three times negative one is positive three. This will be a positive six and this is a positive nine. And what I'm gonna look for when you take your test is, are you, do you, did you use the right domain? Did you start with an open or a closed? So what kind of point am I starting with on this first one? So let's look at this one here. What is, is this equal to negative one? It's just less than negative one. So we're gonna start with an open point. So I have an open point at negative one, three, negative two up six, negative three up nine. Oops, I did not mean to put an open point. I mean a closed point, let me fix that. Okay. And now let's graph our green function. The green function starts at negative one. And now we're going to pick numbers greater than negative one, like zero and let's say two. So take a minute, type that in your calculator. You're taking two times negative one squared plus one, two times zero squared plus one, two times two squared plus one. Go ahead and get your numbers. Now, again, I just picked these numbers. I picked zero because it said zero over here, but you didn't have to pick two. You could have chose one. You could have picked three. You could have, could have picked, picked five. I just picked a number, any number greater than negative one. So you pick the numbers. So... 2 plus 1 is 3. This one is 1, and I think this is 9. Let me make sure. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. And again, this one starts with an open point and is actually at the same place as our last one. So they both start here. So I'm going to put my open circle there. And then 0, 1. Two, nine. The homework is asking for domain and range. You do not have to do a, uh, the domain and range for a piecewise. On the test, if you look at your study guide, you're only asked for domain and range if it's one function, not when it's three functions. So even if it asks you for that in the homework, you don't have to give me the domain and range, only for one single function. And then the last thing is we have to plot that point at negative one, zero. And that's just a point. And that's what that looks like. <clears throat> 